Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby and today I'm going to be talking to you about dispersing wolves. The wolf pack is structured like a human family and the pack consists of a breeding pair and its offspring. Wolf pups grow really quickly, which means often by winter, so about maybe seven to 12 months old, they look like adults. So a pack of wolves will look like a group of adults when actually there might be a lot of younger wolves in the group. Many wolves will stay with the pack for 12 months or more. And this is because they learn valuable skills and they hunt together. Within packs, there's various breeding strategies that are employed, but there's factors that will influence them. So for example, the pack size, the prey availability, the nature and extent of dispersal in wolves appears related to wolf density and prey availability or location. The natural competition that might occur with individual wolves, perhaps over breeding status or resources, may result in a wolf leaving the pack. A subordinate wolf may leave the natal pack in order to find another pack where they might perhaps have a better breeding status. In order for wolves to maintain genetic diversity, they'll disperse and colonise new areas with the formation of new packs. So at any one time, 5 to 10% of the wolf population may be dispersing individuals. So a vast area is covered and they can disperse up to 550 miles. They generally leave the natal pack between one to two years old when they're reaching sexual maturity. So they'll leave in hope of finding a mate and forming their own pack. These wolves are known as dispersers and they are essential to the gene flow. There are other reasons that a wolf may leave the natal pack. It's not always by choice, sometimes they're forced to go. They can be rejected or there might be a shortage of food. If there is a shortage of food and low prey density, a wolf may decide to go off in search of food in other territories. Some dispersers move next door if there's a vacant area. Others will travel around the population as floaters. These lone wolves may cover over 1,000 square miles trying to avoid territorial packs. If lone wolves are detected, they're more than likely be attacked and often killed. To survive, they tend to hang around the edges of the territories or in the corners among several territories. Another breeding strategy is for a dispersed wolf and its new mates to try and set up territory along the edges of its natal pack territory. This can involve either a male or female from the natal pack. This process is known as budding. So the disperser will take on one area of the territory, pairs with a mate and forms a territory next to or overlapping with the natal territory. There's advantages to this as finding territory can be dangerous and timely. Occupying a territory within or close to the natal pack may offer more safety than approaching more distant packs. A variation on budding is pack splitting, and this differs because rather than the single wolf budding off a pack with a mate, a group of wolves splits off and acquires a new territory. Larger than average packs during or around the breeding season is usually the reason for pack splitting, and when two related breeding pairs are present, that pack split. So a solution that resolves conflict among the pack is to split the territory and resources. This may be necessary only when food is scarce. That's my short lesson today on wolf dispersal. Obviously it's a huge topic and there's so much more we could look at. If you have any questions, do comment below and until next time.